respect the chairman, Dr. Adre. He was our guru. Distinguished participants from India and abroad, media students, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. My greetings to all of you on this occasion. You know, coinciding with the topic of the seminar, challenges in design to deployments. We are seeing today a BrahMos as a model from the design to deployments. The system has been already deployed in the Indian Navy and Indian Army, and very soon the system will go to the Air Force. We have faced through many challenges. It's not an easy job to develop a supersonic cruise missile. We have gone through. I will completely narrate what, uh, what we have done. You know about the Gulf War. In the Gulf War, the video not working. Video? Video not working? Video. In the Gulf War, we have seen the large deployment of the Tomahawk cruise missiles, which uh, uh, destroyed most of the targets on the first day itself. We just look at this slide. 1,092 Tomahawk missiles deployed in the Gulf War. And even in the recent Libya war, 112 missiles were launched. Because they are precise, it flies at a very low altitude, deceives the enemy, and it is capable of hitting the target to, uh, to the required destruction. So the massive destruction of the strategic targets and installation can be achieved if we can launch tomahawk missiles before we embark on the air strike. So that is how the, in the, the idea came that in India we must have a cruise missile after the a success in the, some of the missiles in IGMDP. We looked at various options. We studied the world scenario. We found that the world has gone through subsonic cruise missiles very successfully like Tomahawk. And then we decided that when we are going for a new development, we will start with supersonic cruise missiles. That means we have to think of certain systems, particularly the propulsion, which can give higher energy at the same time give higher speed. So we locked on to the liquid ramjet engine, which has got a wide range of Mach number, up to eight, and also it gives an efficiency four times better than a solid propellant. So then we looked at the options, what liquid uh, uh, ramjet engine we could do, and we found to our uh, great uh, advantage that a yes, liquid engine was developed by Russia and it was available. So the, in 1993, when I visited first time the, uh, in Russia the NPO business area, I located an engine which could give an energy uh, of the requirement which we are contemplating for the supersonic cruise missile. Then all the things started. You can see uh, General Sundaram City here. He was one of, he was the, our uh, uh, director at that time in DRDL with uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam as a scientific advisor. We started talking uh, to the Russians uh, to get the technology of the engine. Later from the technology level, we went into the, the discussion of configuring the missile and finally we landed into the joint venture. The joint venture was signed on February 12th, 1998, between DRDO and NPO Missionary as the two joint partners as shareholders with the authorized capital of $250 million. The ratio was tuned to make the system more efficient. We had a 50.5% for India and 49.5% for the Russians. You know any uh, foreign collaboration, today the government permits 26%. So we have gone above that. And we didn't want to have the 51%, 
which are then 51% means the PSU comes in. So 50.5 gives enough flexibility to operate. That's why we have to go for that. The government was uh, uh, considering such a possibility of giving government funding to operate as a private sector. Then we signed a tripartite agreement uh, between DRDO, NPYM and uh, BrahMos, identifying what type of work each one should do and then based on the technological strength and also to do the integration and flight testing. So this is a joint venture between the two governments. We named the missile BrahMos or the company as BrahMos. Uh, you were linking the two famous rivers, Brahmaputra and Muskova. This is a type of share of work, both resources as well as the capabilities based on the core competencies we identified between India and Russia. India takes on the uh, guidance, natural navigation system, onboard computer, fire control systems, all the platforms, then doing the test and evaluation. And the process talk from the Russia is the mainly the Ramjet engine with seeker and the booster. So the common systems are airframe, warhead, software, these are commons which could be shared. This was the arrangement. The JV was formed for joint design, development, manufacturing and also marketing. Marketing to India, marketing to Russia as well as marketing to some friendly countries. That was the overall framework with which the joint venture was formed. From the initial stage itself, we thought that our missile should be unique and universal. To make it universal, we configured such a way that it can be adopted for uh, different types of platforms, like uh, the ship or mobile or submarine or air platform. It can be, it can be launched in many missions. It can fly at uh, 5 to 10 meters height, it can fly at 15 kilometer altitude. It, it also can uh, take multiple, take on multiple targets and it can be tested in, or uh, it can be uh, deployed in different types of environment like snow, uh, mountains, or desert, or tropical places. So it is somewhat universal. So we went through a long uh, program, many milestones have been achieved. Uh, 98 after signing, 99 was the main year where uh, we started the designs and started development of subsystems, went through various tests, individual tests, and in 2001 the first flight trial we did, and in 2003 we did the trial with the ship, and thereon we deployed in the number of ships. And then Army got interested in the land version. We did a land version flight and the plan to land and then went on to deploy it in the Army. And now we are working in the air platform. So we are expecting that the air version to be completed in 2014. And the pontoon test, that is underground, underwater test will be done this year itself. And then we go to the new variants. So we have done so far 34 flight trials of various configurations, various missions, and at various oceans we have done the test, and we have seen is the most reliable system in the world based on the results. You can see some of the test flights. This is the sound is not coming. These are the tests with the ship to ship. You can see the destruction and. This is a recent one from 1135.6 launched to the target. Even without warhead, we were able to destroy the uh, target itself. Hmm? Why is it not working? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay, okay, it's okay, time is not there. This is on the land version, where we have done uh, for the army proving from land to land targets. Uh, this is the target, it is going towards the target, on the target uh, points. 
We achieved results very highly, um, uh, precisely we got the results. And even the uh, discrimination, multiple targets, also we have done the test in multiple targets. It has the final choice of the army you have to meet. It's a very tough requirement. So the missile discriminated various targets and locked on to the correct target which it should hit. So those type of tests have been done. And recently we have done steep dive also. So we have now various versions operating at sea uh, for land with uh, discrimination and uh, uh, surgical strike capability. And the block three of BrahMos, which is a steep dive, supersonic steep dive, so uh, which is uh, which is uh, really applicable in mountain regions where our armed forces need such systems. So overall, if you can see the comparison with what the world has got, the subsonic cruise missile to supersonic, our speed is three times more. Time to hit the target is one third. That means enemy gets a reaction time of one third. Kinetic energy is half mv squared, so nine times. So it has become a very effective system. And today, there is no equivalent available in the world to BrahMos. We are very soon getting into the uh, Super 30. Uh, many of the systems have been made ready. We are now in the integration stage and we will be very soon testing the missile from the platform. This is the air launch cruise missile. It is just showing the sequence of launch, the cyclogram. Some of the tests, initial tests have been done. You are seeing the launcher and the drop test, which is just come out very successfully. And uh, some of the industries who have worked on these uh, uh, systems are here. I have met them. So it's a great partnership with the industries. They are undergoing various tests, the structural tests all going through and the new engine has been tested for high altitude operation. A new booster has been made and tested. So we are now in the final phase of missile readiness and also the integration. So on this occasion, I would like to thank many of the industries who are present here. It is really a public-private enterprise. The HL chairman said the success for the future is the public private, but I want to tell you we have already done that in Brahmos. These are some of the partnership. Uh, many of the facilities are visited by the high level dignitaries of the both the governments and a uh, lot of encouragement we got. So totally it's a concurrent design, development and uh, productionization proactive strategic decisions and actions at the right point of time, a joint working with specialists, scientists from different labs, industries worked together, then multiple production centers in both countries, then user interaction at every stage, and we could establish brand for supersonic missile. So it's a globally competitive product today. The concept was, can we leapfrog instead of going behind the beaten path like a, a subsonic cruise missile? We decided to jump, leapfrog. And I wanted to establish a brand. So it has got innovation, speed, precision, and power, which is dictated by the future war. Then creativity, novel JV concept, one step higher than the state of our technology then thinking ahead and managing all the complexities in a joint venture, solving problems, then following best practices, networking the stakeholders, then the technologies, advanced technologies we used. Today, BrahMos is highly demanded product by Indian armed forces and also by many countries. So BrahMos is a mind-to-market concept. It started with a concept of a joint venture, work together, design development, 
parallelly went for the uh, demonstration tests. Then when we were working on the first demonstration test, we got a ship from Navy, proactive stuff from them. Then we installed. While we were doing the test in the naval platform, ground test started in parallel. During this time, we established all the production facilities. Industries came forward to invest by themselves to do the production. No production facility was invested, invested by joint venture. All have come by the industries. And then production, when we are doing production, we have gone international to, for the exports. So it's a model, a very successful model, with the investment, with the initial investment of 250 million. Later, additionally, we got 50 million for the air version. That means total 300 million has been invested by the two countries. We have crossed already $5 billion business. And uh, very many versions have come, and uh, two more versions will come very soon. And we have got a plan, we have Vision 2050, where we have gone for uh, new variants, including the hypersonic version of the missile. So we are now entering into hypersonic. It's something like a, a Sudarshan Chakra, we want to get it done. That's our plan. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pillai, going through the evolution of uh, Brahmos to the present. Uh, uh, there is a fair amount of time. If you have any comments or queries, the floor is open. Can you get the mic here? So at the outset, let me congratulate you for this outstanding feat of taking India ahead of even the United States. Hold on, hold on, My comment hold on, is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. First here, upwards. A very simple question I just asked. This is such a successful model. Why have we not replicated in the other programs? Uh, Sham, to answer that question is not a fair to, for him to answer not that a question. I'll tell you, it's being attempted in other programs, and certainly such an advanced system, no country is going to offer to you that easily. We remember the initial discussion. So when somebody else offers, we have nothing ever to that. I will, I will, we, I will, we, we I will add to a model. Hmm. I will add to what Chairman says. See, the one is experiment and the see see to yourself. Okay, when you have seen that, you please see one point. That is, the country to country, the sharing of technology. That mind should be there. Freedom should be there. You know, that is number one. Second thing, correct people should be associated in absorbing technology and using technology to the benefit of both. Number three, you are using technology from India, technology from Russia, both should work together. That is very important. If we can do all these things, yes. So it is possible. Now, here the attempt was to jump into a newer area, which others have not done. So we have taken it's a calculated risk by the two governments to see whether it will work. It has worked. Now, as you are saying, definitely it is thrown open. The model. You see, you must also have, uh, there should be a two way flow. Uh, I, I have been involved with several discussions along with Pillay and others in this. Unless both countries have some substantial offer to put into the system, if 90% of the technology comes from one and one, 10% uh, from the other, it won't work. So there are models, and this model can be emulated. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, somewhere there, somebody had a question. Uh, so coming back to my question. Uh, you have already established, yes, in India, we can associate it with the technologically advanced uh, military powers and developing products. Now we have the fifth generation fighter aircraft program in association with the uh, USSR. Now, what are your advices to the people who are dealing with this project? You have already established the template, and uh, what advice would you provide to the planners of the fifth generation fighter aircraft? for its fruition in another 8 to 10 years of time. 
see this uh, basically this, there is a certain technology available with Sukhoi Design Bureau. We are associating HCL and Sukhoi Design Bureau. HCL strength you have just heard. It is not a small organization. They also got technologies. Now what we want is sharing of technology. What is in the fifth generation after the design phase is over, now we have to sit down together and share technology. You don't accept complete Russian technology. Then it is not a joint venture. If it has to be joint venture, you have to share the technologies. The core competence of HCL must be utilized in totally configuring the system. I do not know whether in the design stage itself they have talked about all these things. If it is not talked, still to be done. For example, weapons. We can do all the weapons for the uh, fifth generation aircraft. We can do that. So we have to look at it. Control, guidance, weapon. In the Sukhoi 30, if you look at it, the complete uh, the uh, cockpit and many of the systems, electronic systems, were provided by the Indian side. So there are many things which India can do. The sharing is very important. Yes. Go ahead, please. Hello. So, yeah. So yes. the, uh, the BrahMos missile as such right now has a range of 300 kilometers. Yeah. From what I understand, that's because of the missile technology regiments that Russia has signed off with, that you can't have a missile of more than 300 kilometers exported by Russia. Are there any plans to in indigenize the technology and uh, increase the range? See, the, it is a joint, you know, it is a joint venture. And uh, uh, the Russia is a signatory to the MTCR. So we have to honor our partnership. So the whole design was adopted for 300 kilometers. But it does not stop you to do a flight of your own when it is deployed to go for more range. The cruise missiles, they do not find a place in the MTCR. If you see the MTCR, it's all on the ballistic missiles for weapons of mass destruction. Here we are not nuclear. There is no nuclear payload. It is a high precision tactical missile. So always the opportunity is there. It can be done. No, that no, no. You, are, you are asking questions which, should, which should, should not be asked on this platform and will not certainly be answered for this platform. Next question. It, it, what he said was, if you want to increase the speed, you have the, you have the liberty to do so. Next question. Uh, sir, I want to know the production technologies adopted for this program. Mm -hmm. What uh, new see, facilities? Each parts, you take the parts. You got um, uh, using parts using titanium, parts using aluminium alloys, different parts with the different types of steel. If you look at the subsystems, we have got engine, booster, airframe, and composite parts, which are there in the airframe. So the, all these metallic parts, you need the metals to be available to you. Today, in our country, the metal production is very good. All the industries who are doing materials, like uh, Midani for titanium, then steel and uh, aluminium, with different uh, industries, we have made a consortium for metal industries under the program BrahMos. There are 30 industries involved from making raw material to the forgings or different parts. All are made in India. That is, we have given that task to them. Second thing is making the parts. We make all the airframe. All metallic airframe comes to us from Godrich. All the composite parts come from L&D their new plant at Ranoli. Like that, we have identified agencies who can produce, invest and produce. See, the major part is investment. Investment is done by these industries. We have given the, uh, the technology, fabrication drawings. We have made them to make all the drawings. The drawings have been vetted. We involved the Russian specialists also to oversee and uh, see that whether they can give any clarifications. Like that, we have adopted different strategies for different things. If you take the electronics, the HL, in the HL divisions, they are making all the electronic parts. But we have got also many private industries in the electronics. So we have made electronics industry consortium. That also we have made. 
So we get all the onboard computer, anything we get from them. We are made like that. Thank you, sir. One last question. All right. Two last questions. Positively two last questions. You yeah. said students' interaction, no question from students. Well then? Cat, cat, cat here. Yeah, yes. go ahead, Yeah. But teacher, sound is not coming. So my teacher sound should come. <laughs> so that I can go and convey the answer to the students. No, your experience in the quality control in the private industries in India, how, because you have interacted with a lot of private, because all along quality control is in the aerospace is really important. Your experience in that. See, over the years, in the IGMDP, we evolved, we evolved a concept called Missile System Quality Assurance Agency, which involves the three services, but at the same time, there is a QA group in the missile, uh, missile uh, laboratories, which has interacted and evolved. For every system, we have got a master quality assurance plan we have got which has been introduced not only in the public sector companies, it is introduced in the private sector companies. When large number of private sector companies are involved, you need to do a vendor evaluation and certification. This has been done by the inspection group and they have certified that they can make this product. Then the engineers are posted for the quality control. We create our cells there who can monitor as well as the uh, army inspector he also comes in, uh, comes into the role. So that's how the quality is ensured. All the, we have got the mechanism for waiver. If the waiver is on the fabrication, up to what tolerance waiver can be given, or whether it has got design implication or mission implication. All these things have been framed in the document. This experience, whatever we have got through IGMDP, the same thing percolates to the Brahmo system also, because this is also a missile. So we have got all the industries, nearly 250 industries, have been listed and they have been certified for use for our project. And then we, you know, every year we recheck, quality recheck we do and do it. For example, there's one industry called Anand Technologies in Hyderabad. They make the onboard computer. They adopt the quality assurance system, what is being adopted by ISRO. Every person in the working there, he has gone through a soldier school and he is certified. Now, for our program being a joint venture with the Russians, when we do the integration, we have done attestation to each people. That means the person who is doing the integration, he is an attested person by a quality inspector of India as well as Russia. Like that we have done it. So, well, that's why you see all missiles hit the target. One last question, Manjula. Yeah. Yes. One, one second. One second. One second. Allow, allow a student question. Hello. Yeah, Manjula. Sir, I have a very general question. After this joint venture with the Russians, what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses? And the infrastructure, what India should have to at least mitigate some of the uh, infrastructure problems we have by making a Brahmos, to make a Brahmas. So what all the things we have to do or what you got the experience from this joint venture? Okay. What are our strengths and what are our weaknesses? What we have to do? And as an academia, what our students should be trained at? To the later stage, we can do something over this. Thank you. See, our strength is our people. They are very excellent people, our people. Their minds are good. Our weakness is we don't work together. <laughs> and uh, particularly, particularly you will see that uh, when our scientists are involved, uh, one scientist works, he works very well. When two scientists are given a job, we have a problem. But when they work with the Russians, I have found these two scientists, scientists also work well. So probably the joint venture is one solution to make synergy among ourselves. <laughs> Positively last question there, somewhere. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, can we build any, uh, I mean, can we build a missile which cannot be detected by any radar? Yes, that what you are talking is uh, completely stealth. Stealth. 
exactly. that means you have to not only the low rcs you have to go for material which cannot be recorded by the radar today you see both sides you have to see when we go for exotic materials and try to avoid the uh, radar the radar technologies are not keeping quiet right. they invent some new methodologies to find out so it is a competition and we ourselves try to see that enemy radar does not detect we will try we, we are doing all the things but it is a challenge it, you yeah. cannot say 100% yeah. there is yeah. a stealth bomber you know yes, stealth bomber yeah. it can be detected exactly uh, you know you know recently complete op optical invisibility was demonstrated Uh, there is a method of reflecting light and so that you, you can see through in fact in an international conference on nanomaterials two weeks back it was demonstrated in chennai yes. that is a kind of a robe you wear and uh, you can see through the robe uh, that that's where you need you youngsters must go to research and find out new materials new techniques new technologies perhaps we will arrive when we design an aircraft if you look from the bottom it uh, melts with the sky and if you look from the top it melts with the ground if you can design such a technology you got it thank you dr madan so nano composite one area thank you thank you